Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another Behind the Group podcast. I am DJ Keel. And I am Basil Barrington, and we are back with another review. Today, we are going to review Andor. Um, we didn't do any sort of... Uh, and that's episodic. a weekly thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We didn't do any... We didn't review this on a weekly uh, basis. Uh, we just watched it and... Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> do. I mean, this thing, okay, uh, IMDb gave it an 8.4 overall, right? Mm-hmm. And um, I think that's fair. It, it's fair, but it's not uh, what I would have given it. I mean, but um, it's, man, yeah. this is, we were just talking offline. First of all, Andor blows rings of power out the water, period. Out of the universe, man. The universe, right? <laughs> it's a different, the, the thing that's the most upsetting about this is the amount of money that rings of power had. Versus the budget Andor has and how Andor looks like a fully fleshed out universe. And it, you know, it looks like there's a lot of extras and people were there walking around doing things like it looks real. Whereas Rings of Power, it looks like they had 20 people on set at any time. And that's all they had. <laughs> and it's, just, it's not, it's not the same. <laughs> you know, I know one thing's sci-fi and the other thing's fantasy, but like, it's not the, the quality level is not the same. That's visually weird. either <clears throat> this was um where do you think this was shot this was shot in scotland yeah that and, sounds about right because like you know the whatever the planet was they're on they, it seemed gloomy right everything's extra <laughs> gray yeah. and they got cobblestone everywhere so like, yeah it sounds like scotland yeah so i was just like <laughs> okay so they shot everything here um and i was mm-hmm. like and you know what else i um i was reading up on some stuff and i was trying to figure out what was the budget mm-hmm. for andor yeah i don't think they're gonna tell you well, the the internet, <laughs> they're basically <laughs> saying that the guesstimate, yeah, the, yeah, the guesstimate is between fifteen to twenty, fifteen million to twenty five million. I always get that mixed up. Oh, okay, okay, all right, fifteen that's million to like, twenty five million. That is that's, phenomenal. You can pull that off. <laughs> oh, I was about, no, listen. If if it was like twenty five thousand dollars per episode, <laughs> this show, man, it should win everything. This show should become an egot. That's how yeah. you know, fabulous it is. <laughs> But it's like fifteen to twenty five million. If you yeah, took yeah. the lowest um fifteen million, that's a mm-hmm. hundred and eighty million dollars. Mm-hmm. So that doesn't sound like outlandish to me compared to let's not even think about talk about like what Amazon paid for mm-hmm. just to get Yeah, yeah. They, they spent some money. Mm-hmm. Star Wars did a hundred and eighty million to create Andor. And it was just, yeah. Andor is just fabulous. You know, other thing too is that it seems like they shot a lot on location instead of using like a green screen mm-hmm. and and uh, the volume thing with the LEDs. Yeah. And yeah. That, that helps so much with the quality of what, how the thing looks. Because that's the problem with Mandalorian and Boba Fett and all this other stuff. It was all in this green screen thing and it just didn't feel right. There's something slightly off about it. Yeah. But Andor, they did the opposite. They went on location. They had more extras. The budget, I think, was probably about the same or maybe less. Mm-hmm. And quality levels. I, I, the biggest the biggest thing that helped them so much is the acting and the script. Because they had good actors here. Yeah. Like uh, <clears throat> the Stellan Skazgar, whatever his name is. Stellan Skazgar. I, I can never pronounce his name. Uh, uh, Diego uh, Luna. Yeah, Diego. These are all good actors. <laughs> They're <Excuse> good actors. <clears throat> You know, um, the Genevieve O'Reilly, she's a good actress. I've seen her in other stuff. She was, so, um, okay, okay, so they brought her back from Rogue One. Yeah, yeah, she's a, she's playing a Mon Martha or whatever. Uh, from okay, Rogue One. yeah, yeah, yeah. She actually, um, it felt like it's in the, they made this in the 70s, though. That's that I like that about Star Wars. Star Wars is you can't put a date on it, it just feels like time. I'm glad you brought that up, but before I say that, I'm, I'm just, I was just mm-hmm. gonna say, like, um, um, Mon Mom, uh, Mothma. Um, mm-hmm. I checked out Rogue One before I, I watched, um, you know, um, the f- season finale of Andor. And mm-hmm. I was like, oh, that's that's her, right? And then get back to, you know, Andor. I'm like, oh, she's here too, right? I'm like, okay. So they had to bring her back because she made a lot of sense. And um, Yeah, because was she in uh, Empire <clears throat> Strikes Back? No, no, it was um, Return of the Jedi I think she was in. No, it's um, a different actress because that was in the 80s, though. <laughs> but uh, <okay. laughs> she, it was... Um, her character is in those movies. I can't remember which one. Mm. Either Return of the Jedi or, 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 or I think it's Return of the Jedi. 
this character I'm pretty sure is, it's Return of the Jedi. This character is also in um the Clone Wars. Yeah, yeah. She's you a know, big the, she's influential into it because like mm-hmm. she helped finance the Rebel Rebellion. She right. did a bunch of stuff. She's important. She's important, man. You know, and she looks really good too. <laughs> You know, I, I, looks, I can't disagree with this. <laughs> she looks really good too. I'm like, wow. She, right? I mean, she, coming from Rogue One to now, she definitely um, aged really well. That's, like, so, that's uh, a glow up right there, man. <laughs> that's a glow up, you know, um, for real. So she really did it. Um, but again, I was just amazed at like the quality of Andor. Mm-hmm. The storytelling was ridiculous. And here's the thing, right? Mm-hmm. Um, uh, what's this? Uh, Tony Gilroy, right? He yeah. has no problem going on different podcasts, different shows, being interviewed. He's been talking about this for weeks. Yeah, yeah. He, he's he's made some interesting re- revelations about he, the show. Yeah. One of the things, one of the revelations he made was um, <clears throat> when they went to shoot the film, the show, mm-hmm. they had no writers on set. And generally, when mm. you shoot a film or a television yeah, show, yeah, you have this have, thing already. Yeah, yeah, you have writers yeah, on set, punch, punching stuff up and making right, whatever. exactly. But he basically said, "Listen, the coloring book was done when we were ready to mm-hmm. shoot. We we just went in and shot. That's it. Mm-hmm. No, no rewriting, nothing. These guys, they got everything tight before they started shooting." That's what you're supposed to be doing, though. Like I understand, like sometimes they go, "I'll yeah. change a line or whatever," mm-hmm. but. That stuff, like with the Lord of the Rings, it didn't feel like it was polished, and it seems like yeah. they were ringing it. Yeah. But this, it, they had the official story done, and they just went and shot the stuff. And it, it, the story makes sense, except one thing. There's one thing that I, I, I was like, where's the storyline going? Because like the very first episode, he goes to that planet looking for his sister, and he never mentions her again. <laughs> That's the last time he talks about it. So I was well, like, yeah, what happened with that part? Well, um. You know, I remember that as well. Um, mm. Was that for real though? I mean, or was that just like yeah? A... He went to the he went to that mm. brothel thing looking for his sister, and then they they killed the the two security guards people that started the whole other thing. But like, he never finished his quest to look for his sister anymore. He's like, all right, guess I'm gonna <laughs> okay. go do some thing now. Like, <laughs> let's, let's go do some criming. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, um, it, that yeah. seemed like a more important <clears throat> story, and they just didn't touch it at all. They just moved on. Maybe that was with editing. They just didn't think that, you know, adding those scenes in felt, felt right with what they were doing. So, I mean, that's possible, but yeah, they just never touched on that storyline again. Yeah. You you know what else that I, I felt about Andor? <clears throat> and you mm. touched on this a little bit. Um, it really felt like Star Wars, right? Yeah. It felt not ta- in that universe. Right. I'm not talking about like uh Mandalorian. I'm not talking about Boba Fett. I'm not talking about mm-hmm. any of that stuff. Um, you know, Kenobi. Andor mm-hmm. felt a lot like Star Wars, um, Rogue One. I don't know anything between Rogue One and Andor <laughs> because I watched all the movies, but they were not impressive. You know, the last great Star Wars movie was Rogue mm-hmm. One. Even though Rogue One wasn't that fabulous, it was still mm-hmm. better. It was a good sort of addition to the Star Wars, you know, franchise. Um, yeah, and well, um, I mean, like the I like the sequels and the prequels. I well, yeah. the no, I like the original series and I like the prequels. I can't stand the last set of the new movies; those are terrible. Yeah, they, they, those were terrible. And the other thing is this, right? Um, they brought back a lot of Star Wars esque things, the old school mm. controls. You know, yeah, it feels like the, the, you're in the it, 70s with this it thing. Feel, that's what it's I mean. To. So, like, I mean, was this Tony Gilroy? Did he go in and say, you know, wait, we need to do, he's the showrunner, we need to do it this mm-hmm. way. Because, again, the coloring book was done. Everyone mm-hmm. filled in the colors and everything. When they went to shoot, they were shooting. Well, I think it goes back to production design. And the, a lot of these other shows seem lazy. Like they didn't, their the attention to detail was awful in Boba Fett. Like it was bad. Oh my god, forget it. Think yeah. the only, there's so many things that don't make any sense. I mean, and 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 same thing with Obi Wan. Like the production designs awful with what they were doing. It did, the <clears> stuff didn't make any sense. Yeah, I think that Mandalorian's closer, but you know that the, you had more quality people working on the show, 
So that's a factor. Like there's bigger people that like in Hollywood that are working on the show. Yeah. But um, as far as this goes, like this felt like it was part of this universe. Like you could watch this show, get to Rogue One, and then go into New Hope, and it'll be fine. It's a smooth transition. Yeah. Whereas like Boba Fett, <laughs> he's supposed to fall in the pit and then get out here like a couple weeks later or whatever, and he's like seventy years old and he's two hundred pounds. <laughs> like what? what right. that, that doesn't make any sense. That's illogical. <clears throat> right. And when you talk about like all of these other characters, like a Mandalorian, Boba Fett, mm-hmm. um, Ahsoka Tana, <clears throat> these characters were not in the first three movies, correct? No. They're no. they're all people that um I forgot the guy's name. Uh dude with the cowboy hat. He's the one that created them. He he worked on um the Clone Wars. Uh oh Filoni? I'm blanking there. Yeah, Filoni. There you go. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, he created a lot of these characters. Yeah. Because like the Inquisitors. Um, he he created the Inquisitors, Ahsoka yeah. Tana. He, he created in- all those people. The Inquisitors, I like I told you before, the Inquisitors mm-hmm. need a show. And Tony Gilroy needs to do the show. He needs to be the show. <laughs> it should it the Inquisitors needed to be an adult thing. It, it the making it the way they did, where it's like kids and there's no blood and uh, it didn't make any sense. Yeah, you know, like, so vi- you guys are violent people killing people. <laughs> like the fact that it, lo- it felt like a kid show in Obi Wan d- that defies logic as far as tone goes. Yeah, I mean, why even bother introducing these people if you're gonna make it seem so fake? Yeah, it's. Uh, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you know the the thing about um, Andor, and then you take the other three uh, TV shows: uh, Mandalorian, mm-hmm. Kenobi. And also Boba Fett, right? <clears throat> Those mm-hmm. three shows, they look like and they feel like computer generated scenes and everything else, right? Yeah, yeah. It's like extra fake. Right. Whereas like Andor, it just again, like I said, it felt like Star Wars, which is I think that's what Star Wars was missing, you know? Mm-hmm. They they just throwing yeah. stuff on top of the wall. They're just like, hey, you know what? Let's see if Mandalorian works. I think Mandalorian worked because, you know, it was new and fresh. And then they came out with a yeah, whole bunch of other stuff because you know? it was first, a hundred percent because it was first, right? And mm-hmm. people they didn't have time to marinate on what they just saw. It was like, oh, okay, this is Star Star Wars again. All right, cool, right? You know, and yeah. was it really the Mandalorian who shined, or was it like Baby Yoda? It was kind of Baby Yoda. <laughs> it was kind of Baby Yoda. And when, right? you, when you got rid of Baby Yoda in the second season, for most of the second season, it, did, it wasn't as good. No, it wasn't as good, you know. And then they brought back, you know, or they brought on, you know, Ahsoka Tano. Um, like I said, yeah. listen, in the Clone Wars, I love her character, right? Mm-hmm. But as a show, it's not going to work. I'm going to, listen, I am putting it on the line <laughs> right now. Ahsoka Tano will not work. Rosario mm-hmm. Dawson will not be a great Tano. Period. I mean, okay. Just if if you see how swift Ahsoka moves, if you see just everything that she does, and again, mm-hmm. I know this is animated and it's not like you know a, a, a movie or anything like that, but I just mm-hmm. don't see you know rosario dawson being able to do that without a lot of stunts with a lot of with with a lot of stunt doubles the whole nine yeah but fortunately for her she's got a bunch of makeup on and this the helmet's the crown thing with the horns on it (laughs) you could easily throw a stunt double in there you would notice easily dude you know (laughs) that that makeup is a huge help to being able to get away with stuff what do you think about the prison scene in andor Oh, it was really well done because like that's the kind of thing of it's like a, a box episode where, you know, it's just this thing. It's not really connected to the overall story, mm-hmm. but, you know, it was interesting. Like, uh, you know, the, 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 the government, whatever, the empire mm-hmm. had like their slave labor in this place, creating whatever they were creating, like some claws or whatever. I have no idea what that thing was. Yeah. They're just ratcheted up stuff with screws, whatever. But like. It, it adds to the universe because you're like, well, the Empire is super evil and they also have slave labor. Okay, cool. Like It, it adds to how bad the Empire was. But it, the other thing that was interesting about it was the was the ISB, whatever the name of that thing was. ISB. That, mm-hmm. Yeah, they were, they were, that level of the bureaucracy and government inside of the Empire 
that to me added to the show tremendously because that's the type of thing that happens when you know somebody takes over a country they have their secret police whoever that's doing the stuff for them do 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 heavy lifting keeping everything intact and a lot of these people were like they weren't part of the evil empire before but they took the job and they're like i'll take it i'll do it sure right and it, that's that that's that aspect of you know i've always wondered like how could this kind of thing happen but like that's how that kind of thing happens you have this organization keeping everything in place yeah that's how it works <laughs> but like going back to like the the prison thing it was a box episode and normally something like that gets boring but it was really fascinating how like how their their lives were you know how the people thought they're gonna get her out free but they're never gonna leave like there's so much stuff elements that are interesting that you could have done a show just about the jail by itself it. and it would have been yeah. interesting because um <clears throat> One of the super interesting things about <clears throat> the prison scene was, um, or prison episode mm -hmm. was, these people who thought that they had 200 days left, mm -hmm. you know, they were just sent to another sort of section. <laughs> yeah, they went around. You're like, wait a minute. Moving, it's, and, you know, that's the sort of government part of Andor, you know, mm -hmm. and it also lent, um, you know, just a bit more information to uh, Andor that, hey, you know what? We really do need to defeat the Empire, the rebels, right? Mm -hmm. Now, I mean, I know they call them rebels, yeah. but um, are they really rebels or um, insurgents? A bit of both, you I know. Guess? In, Cause in today's they, sort of like you know wordplay, you know, we don't have rebels; we have insurgents. You know, if you think about like the Afghan War and things yeah. like that, you know. But, you know, I guess well, it's a Star Wars thing. It was thing. created in the 70s. So, like, yeah. you know, the, I guess the terminology is kind of different for them. But, like, I think it's a bit of both because the, there are people in government that are kind of rebelling. So, I, I guess you could use that terminology. But it is basically insurgency. <clears throat> I think Andor is part of it and the Saul Guerrero and that kind of stuff. Those are insurgents. And then Mon Martha is more like a rebel. Right. And, mm -hmm. you know, people at Andor or whatever, they're, that's more, I guess, rebels. Because, like, politics, like, pushing against it versus actual gunfire or whatever. Yeah. Uh, kinetic warfare. Uh, yeah, I think that's, that's it's a fair uh, assumption if you think about it. I think that's fair. I think uh, you, you just said something about my Ma Mothma. Um, mm -hmm. Dude, her character was, um, she, she, she kind of hit it out the box. I mean, just mm -hmm. you know her storyline was just absolutely amazing the, the entire show was amazing to be honest with you and mm -hmm. i didn't really see um any weirdness to this show 12 episodes i saw absolutely no weirdness as a matter mm -hmm. of fact i stopped watching it at episode number five and i just waited until all the other episodes were available oh it's done and then you, yeah <clears> and then let's one go. night i sat down and i just watched episode six one right after the other and i was like mm -hmm. wow you know as a first season as you know just like hey and you know i, I also understand that mm -hmm. um you were saying you alluded to this like a, a couple times um, previously that this show was in the making for like three years, right? This show had been like made, right? Yeah, I think it is, it is it, they've been sitting on the shelf for a minute with this show. Oh, I'm, I'm just read, I'm reading a, a, a comment here. It's trivia. It's just like, uh, unlike The Mandalorian, The Book of Boba Fett, and Obi-Wan Kenobi, which use stagecraft to create virtual sets mm -hmm. and locations in most scenes, the technology wasn't used in this show. Wow. It, you know what? It felt yeah. like that technology, it felt like it was on location. You had a mm -hmm. lot of people when they were in Ferrex. That, that, you know, that wasn't a copy and paste. That was a lot of people. Yeah, because they normally do a, co a copy and paste with some CGI somewhere. And right. It, mm -hmm. But it felt like there's a lot of people there. Yeah, this wasn't a, um, you know, copy and paste. And the other thing is this, right? I was also a uh, little impressed with like the ISB. You know, we know who the ISB mm -hmm. is. We know that the ISB are, you know, they're just, you know, the secret police. <laughs> they're secret police, right? Um, yeah. It showed the um, the politics like with the ISB. Mm -hmm. It showed the infighting with the ISB, and um, and I kind of felt, and you tell me what you think. Um, I'm trying to find uh, Dietra, mm -hmm. right? 
I kind of mm-hmm. felt that Dietra and what's the guy's name? Uh, Cyril. Yeah, I think it's Cyril. Cyril. I kind of felt like, I think it was in episode number 11 or t- 10. But when he mm-hmm. sort of like approached her when she was like at the military facility, she mm-hmm. sort of, you know, she was, it, it felt like she sort of interested in him a little bit. And then you get to <laughs> like, you know, just like, you know what? Oh, this guy has balls. You know, he approached me like on my base, mm-hmm. on my, you know, territory, right? And then like in um, the season finale, he kind of saved her. He, and they he had saved that, her life, right? <laughs> right. They had that. She was shook as anything. And they had that look. And mm-hmm. I was just like, oh, I knew it. I knew it. I'm waiting for the kiss. <laughs> I'm waiting for the kiss because you know what? He is the, he's an opportunist. So if he has to use her, he will, mm-hmm. you know? Oh, he's absolutely. Trying, yeah. He's, he's just he's trying to get back to the get, ISB. Right. He's trying to get away from his mom. Like, yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> That was, Imagine that was having a mother so, like that. <laughs> yeah, I'm saying so. Yeah, whatever he has to do to get out of that situation, he would do. Yeah, I think you're and, right about that. And then you had um, Luthen. Mm. Luthen was, um, I guess, he was the head of the rebellion, right? Um, but we know that at some point he's not going to be the head of the rebellion just based on Rogue One, right? Um, yeah. So well, he's gonna meet but, his end somehow. Yeah. So um, so I was just like, okay, but I like this character. I like how he played a double character. He played the rebel, mm-hmm. then he played like this, I guess an art. He's gallery the antiques owner. dealer. Yeah, antiques, antiques dealer. dealer. I was just like, this is listen, this is kind of cool, you know. And I'm just like, mm-hmm. the worlds, you know, the Ferrex. Do mm-hmm. you think that Andor will introduce a death, a death Star or what? Well, no, because they got the information in Rogue One, so I don't think they're going to... They didn't know about it until the Rogue One movie happened. So probably probably won't introduce it, but I think we're probably going to get more Star Wars characters introduced in the second season. And like how exactly he's part of... Because he's not really part of the Resistance yet. Yeah. So mm-hmm. how did, how does he get to that? How does he meet uh, Ma Mothra? And, you know, how... Because at, at the end of the, the season, I think Luthen was just like, all right, Cause he's asking him, like, kill me and let me get out of this thing. And he's like, nope, come, you're coming with me, kill bro. Kill me or take me in. <laughs> yeah, he's like, ah, oh, you come with me, bro. Cause that's what they were, they were looking for him in the first place to do that. I mean, that's why they were there. That's why Vel was there. Uh, Val was there. Or yeah, Vel. they were, they that's were looking why, for him um, to take him in. Yeah, um, you know, and he was he went back there, you know, because obviously his mother mm. died, and also he was trying to find uh, Bix. Um, mm. But um, and uh, what's the other person's name? Uh, Vel's girlfriend is it uh, Sita? Sita Cass. Yeah, uh-huh. Sita. Yeah. Um, so who who knew that you know they had a little relationship going on? You know, <laughs> like, you know, you know? Yeah, in Star Wars, <laughs> the only two people can have relationships: Anakin and Padme. Nobody else can have a relationship. In Star Wars. <laughs> A surprise. <laughs> Looks like uh, Diego, like um, Cass, uh, Cassie and Andor, he had no, he was all about business, no relationships. Yeah, this guy is quick to blast a mofo, man. <laughs> he shoots everybody. I mean, <laughs> no questions he, asked. He's like, bow, got to go. Sorry. <laughs> he gets rid of every evidence possible. Anything that's yeah, considered he's, he's, evidence, he gets rid of. There's very few characters I've seen that's like, you know what? This guy's not messing around. No questions asked if he's got to get boxed in and or shooting you. Yeah. Which I I find that very fascinating. Yeah, I also find it fascinating that when he actually went to Luthen on his ship, mm-hmm. he was he was basically ready to die. He was like, I'm tired of this. Kill me yeah. or take me in. Here's a gun. Mm-hmm. And I guess Luthen was like kind of impressed with that. He was like, well, this guy did help us, you know, rob like, you know, yeah, they got Basically. they're sitting on stacks of money. They got racks and racks right now. Like, and Andor was a huge part of that. And he's like, "Well, wait a minute. Maybe this guy can help, or maybe he can yeah, be my protege useful. or something like that." I don't know, but um, mm-hmm. it. Oh, and, and this is what I wanted to say. I was not mad at the ending at all because a lot of times, mm-hmm. a lot of these shows that give you like the bull crap, you know, uh, clickbait ending, mm-hmm. you know, or like it, it's just like a you know, fall off the cliff, cliffhanger. And it's just like, well, that's silly. Now I got to wait like a year or two years to mm-hmm. catch up, to find out what's going on. The way this show ended was extremely smart. It did not mm-hmm. leave you like wanting more right away, but 
when it is available, the second season, you're going to be all in just based on the mm-hmm. show, the ending. I was, everything was on point, man. I, I don't, was there, is there anything negative or anything that you did not like in this show other than, mm-hmm. you know, the first episode of him going, trying to find his sister, then they didn't mention that at all after the first uh, episode? Um, I, I'm okay with how it ended too. I think that if I had a complaint, maybe a little bit more action, cause it was very slow paced and kind of like a spy thriller. I wouldn't mind a little bit more action, maybe a little bit more in space, but as far as the overall show, I thought it was well done. So no, I don't, I don't really have any major, major complaints that it like took off a whole bunch of points for, at least in my opinion. Yeah. You know, I had, um, no complaints at all. Mm-hmm. Um, I like every single thing. I like um, Dietra. I like, you know, Ma. I, I like mm-hmm. all the characters, dude. Even our uh, old boy's mom, who was like a hoot, but uh, I liked her too, you know? <laughs> she was a hoot. I was like, yeah. she She seems like the type of mother, old school, mm-hmm. that sits down every night, has a little brown liquor, you know, <laughs> maybe smokes a cigarette, you know, just like... Mm-hmm. One of those type of like uh, those older <laughs> women from like back in the day, you know. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, this show, man. Uh, this and I know uh, we spoke before, and you were saying that um, a lot of people, mm. th- the show just isn't getting a lot of. Yeah, know, it's not a looks. it's not a huge hit, not like the level they <clears throat> want it to be. Right, but you know what? I think now, and just again listening and reading over the last few mm. weeks, I think now people are really starting to get into this, man. I mean, if you look at, um, I'm just going to take you here. If you look at every episode here, let me just go here. Mm -hmm. So again, the, the show and it's the whole season got first season got like an 8.4. Right. But if you go into each episode, Mm -hmm. if I can go into each episode here, let me go here. If I can get here. Okay. Here's, here's the episode, uh, the shows here. Um, Every show, with the exception of, okay, nothing. Um, actually, episode number 12 of uh, Rick's Road uh, mm-hmm. got a 9.3. <laughs> but you're right. In the beginning, it was sort of slow, 7.4, 7.3, um, and then it started picking up. But you know mm-hmm. what? The lowest rating was a 7.3. Which is not bad. That's fairly good for I mean, a show like this. That is that. That's what I'm saying, man. You know, you can't front on a show like this because yeah. the showrunners, the production, the production value, the cinematography. Um, it mm. feels like it was shot on location, which I think it was. Um, mm-hmm. I it it does feel like this. The budget for this show could have been a hundred and at least a hundred and eighty million dollars if we're taking 15 million per episode it feels like that right Mm -hmm. yeah yeah Mm. i definitely think that you know it helps that they decide to do practical and and here's the thing right everybody i've talked to about this show has been like oh this show's great i haven't talked to anybody that's like oh this show's trash i hated it star wars sucks everybody who's seen the show is like this is great I want to see more of this. This was what Star Wars should be. Yeah. And it's a good story. Like the, the Rogue One element of this this part of the saga, if you will, it's a fascinating part of, you know, the overall. We'll do six movies. We're not going to do the full nine. But the, the best of the six movies, I like this whole behind the scenes thing that's going on underneath the, the Empire. And I like that there's no Jedis there. And you're not focusing on the Skywalkers. It's another aspect of a thing that happened. And they all kind of merged together. This is cool to me. And I wish they would make more stuff like this. That's a very good point. I didn't even realize that. No Jedi at all. And mm-hmm. it's still interesting, right? Yes. Like, wow. That is that is such a good point. This show, Andor, had no Jedi. It was just ISB and Rebels. Mm-hmm. That's it. Yeah, you know, but it, it shows you how bad the the sequel movies were because you had free reign to do whatever you want, and you made an awful movie. <laughs> you had the Jedi, you had you know, you had lightsabers. There's no lightsabers in this show. None. You had like you know duels. You had a limited budget. You had, you had top notch actors. You could do whatever you wanted, 
and you made an awful movie where these guys had limited budget. They had a certain amount of story they could only tell because, you know, you want to mess with everything that happens after this, the story is done. So you, you're kind of boxed in with this little section and you told a way better story. <laughs> like it, it shows the, the quality of just having a good showrunner is and a good script. Listen, and like I said, the storytelling, the script, the showrunner, mm-hmm. Tony Gilroy, out the park. Hit it out the park. Mm-hmm. This show is like, I'll, I'll say this. Um, and I know we saw, we watched uh, the Foundation. I'm, I'm sorry, Foundation. We also watched Halo. Mm-hmm. Um, I watched um, Extinction, um, mm-hmm. which was really good. Um, we watched a lot of shows uh, this year. <clears throat> mm-hmm. I don't, I don't know what else is hitting this like this year anyway. <laughs> I mean, what what's hitting this? I mean, we can't say yeah. like we can't say the Mandalorian. Definitely not Boba Fett. Um, oh, no, no. I mean, if anything comes close to it, I would think that for me anyway, it would be something mm-hmm. in the Star Trek ca- category because they've been bubbling up on these different shows. Discovery mm-hmm. is dope. You know, Strange New Worlds is dope. I don't know about Picard. You know, <laughs> you know you even though they Picard. picked up a season, a, a third <laughs> season, you know, but um, mm-hmm. <clears throat> but Discovery is forget it and like strange new worlds forget about it but you mm-hmm. know on this like super duper like you know hyper you know sci-fi stuff from star wars man this andor forget it it mm-hmm. is andor's 100 I, I don't what here's the sad thing right mm-hmm. if you have a success like this it's almost like in the music industry you're like you're, you're only as good as your last album right <clears throat> yeah yeah right so like what? What's the, what's the follow up to this? I mean, if they make if if they make a Star Wars movie, mm-hmm. I mean, what? <laughs> That's a good question. Like, what? I, they they have a lot of they they're in a tough spot. Like season two's got to be really good. I think, it and be. it's got to lead right into Rogue One. It has mm-hmm. to go right into it. It can't it can't wait. It's got to go right into Rogue One. Yeah. Uh, yeah. They have to, they have a tough task ahead of themselves because they did a really good job on this, and you know like I think we didn't probably didn't have too much expectations because all the other shows were so bad, but yeah, this is a this is a very good in, in question here. I, I'm not sure honestly. I don't know. It's gonna be tough, man. Um, Kathleen Kennedy has a lot of decision making to do because did she get fired? Dude, she's like she runs the company. I don't think so. I, I know she runs it, but like I thought she got um demoted or something like that. Well, she's on um she's on the credits for this this one here, Andor. So Yeah, well this stuff was filmed way in advance. I there's a huge shakeup at Disney right now. It should they just be. got rid of the last president. <laughs> the, the, they let uh Bob Iger's back. They got rid of the last I president. I know Iger's back, which is a good thing. <clears throat> yeah be- because you know disney was uh it was just drifting you know and you can tell it was rudderless it was drifting absolutely you can tell it was drifting by i mean here's the thing right mm-hmm. you know to make a series and then say oh the second season is coming out two to three years from now right who does that it's a terrible idea. Why do you think, <laughs> know, why, why you and it? how do you think you're going to continue to increase your subscriber base when you do something like that? Like, I'm, I'm talking mm-hmm. about Loki, which was only six episodes. Well, I mean, Rings you of sh- Power is doing the same thing. They're not coming back for like two, three years. Okay, well then, I mean, I may be gone. <laughs> they got you know the same what I'm issue. Saying? Yeah, so it's just yeah. like, if you're doing six episodes, it's just like, dude, I want you here for an extra, like, three weeks so we can do the other, like, season. You know, it's just like, come on. Yeah, knock so it I out. Don't know, like... I, I don't know, but this was a really good reintroduction to Star Wars mm. with Andor. It wasn't Mandalorian. Yeah. It wasn't Boba Fett. It wasn't, like, um, um, Kenobi. The reintroduction to Star Wars is Andor, and it was a mm-hmm. hundred all day. Mm-hmm. You know, I agree. I agree. It was, it was a good. It got me excited about Star Wars again, and just being in that universe. Because the last couple of shows it was just like it just taught it tanked. I I wasn't interested at all. I don't care. 
again. And like now I'm like, I'm back. I'm kind of, I got my big toe back in. I'm not fully back in, but I got, you know what I'm saying? Like my my foot's in the door, like a little bit. Another good point. It got me really excited again about Star Wars. That's a good point. That's, that's what Mm -hmm. Andor did. That's what, Mm -hmm. I mean, do you think that Tony Gilroy said, you know what? I'm going to create Andor this way. And you mm-hmm. you have to believe that he just bubbled up on Star Wars before he even like got the coloring book. You mm-hmm. know, it was just like, okay, let's watch these movies, let's watch the TV shows, let's see what's good, let's see what's bad. This is all like, you know, Star Wars. Let's bring it back to Star Wars. Let's create mm-hmm. the like 1970s buttons inside of like the control rooms. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Let's create the weird ISB uniforms. The hats are sick though, aren't the hats dope though? The yeah, the hats, hats, <laughs> the hats, the hats, the hats are, sick, are like yeah. hardcore and whatnot. You know, <laughs> it's just like, and you know the the jackets they wear. I mean, dude, like you know the costume design was kind of dope too. You know, so um, mm-hmm. the whole joint was dope, man. Uh, let's zip this up, man. You have anything else to say about this? I uh, know that's about it. I definitely think that people need to watch the the show. You got to give it a chance. And I understand why you wouldn't want to watch any more Star Wars, but I think this is worth it. Yeah, this is definitely worth it. Um, Star Wars and or what's your rating? Mm-hmm. Uh, I would give it like a, I'll give it a nine. I sure. I, I give it a nine. It was good. Yeah. You know what? Uh, I am also going to give Star Wars and or on Disney plus a nine because mm-hmm. I mean, uh, you know, I was thinking, uh, I, I was uh, running today and um, I was like, just thinking, I was listening to, um, you know, just someone interviewing Tony Gilroy, right? And mm-hmm. I was just like, you know what, this is, this is pretty cool. I really like this. I mean, like, is this like the best thing I've seen this year? That's yeah. what I kept thinking as I was running. I was like, is this the best thing? Is this the best TV show I've seen this year? That Maybe. we reviewed. That we reviewed. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, like as far as reviews go, for sure. I think it's yeah. one of the best ones. And I'm just like, it, I think it is. However, there are some shows that I watched outside of what we do that are pretty dope mm-hmm. too. But yeah, this this... It feels big budget. It feels like cinematic. It feels real. It feels mm-hmm. like no one went into a room and said, here's the whiteboard. Here are the check boxes. Let's mm-hmm. make sure that we tick these off. That was thrown out the door. It was thrown out the window. Well, because here's the thing. Like, this show is diverse. And, you know, there's a lot of different races and people on there. But it didn't feel forced. Because mm-hmm. a lot of shows, it feels forced. I'm like, oh, I can't. I can't do this. Yeah, but like it, it seemed like it was like a normal thing where you had people in there interacting, and I'm I'm okay with that. Honestly, yeah. I'm okay with that. Yeah, this was a good show. One hundred. If you haven't watched Andor on Disney Plus, mm-hmm. this is a show you. This is a must watch. You have to watch mm-hmm. this show. This show is so incredibly good. Kudos to uh, Gilroy and the entire production staff who put this together. Mm-hmm. All the. Uh, the acting crew, um, man, this this was it was bananas, dude. This was dope, man. A, a nine for both of us, mm-hmm. you know. Great yeah. show. Yeah. Well, there you have it. Another episode of the Behind the Groove podcast. I am Basil Barrington. I am DJ Keo. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. And until next time, peace. All right.